Welcome back to It's a Vibe with Shay J, your one-stop shop for mental wealth, health, wellness, fitness, and all things energy. Today, I am so excited, you guys. I have an amazing human being here with me that I cannot wait to tell you guys about and just let you guys know his journey, what he's been through, how he's gotten to his success. And let's introduce him right now. Milo LaBelle, how are you? I'm great, Shay J. How are you? I'm so good. I'm so happy you're here. Hey Amen. I'm happy to be in your presence. Anytime we get together, there's magic. It's just my heart is already <laughs> bursting. <laughs> <laughs> Mine too. I'm just trying to keep it cool because the energy that uh, you project is just incredible. Thank you. And yes. I feel that with you. And not only do you project it, but you hold space for people to really like be themselves. So how does that happen for you? How do you feel you connect with people from the minute that you kind of walk in and you meet people? It's been a pleasure uh, studying this. I mean, I kind of researched it as a child growing up uh, because... Uh, people of color weren't always allowed to use the same uh, facilities as white people. Mm -hmm. So I would research this, why, why, why can't we all be the same? Yeah. Can't we all dance in the same room? Can't we all just get to know each other in the blink of an eye? So yeah. in researching that, I, I've been able to just walk in a room and say, hey, how are you? Colorblind. I love that. And you see people's soul versus their color. Exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. And that's where I feel like I come from as well. So that's, I feel like we just connected from the minute we met. We sure did. We sure. And it was, it was, like you said, it was a spiritual experience and, and just connecting on that level is a whole nother level of consciousness. Absolutely. Yes. And we met in a very amazing place here in LA called yes. Millennium Dance Complex. Everybody's kind of the woo-ha Millennium Dance <laughs> Complex, which that kind of leads me bringing me into your accolades and things that you have done. I wanted to just jump right into the start of that because you've done incredible things. And I just want to highlight and allow you to kind of talk about the long list you've choreographed <laughs> for Michael Jackson, Sandra Bullock, Jessica Alba, all these big stars. And tell us a little bit more about your accolades and your career path and things that you've done. Well, it's it's been a amazing journey. It's It's been blessed. And I like to say that I'm an instrument of my creator's presence. Uh, and he's allowed me to uh, traveled to over 30 countries. Uh, I've taught uh, kings and queens and princesses, um, our A-list celebrities. I was able to coach Michael Jackson when he wanted to transition from jazz more into hip hop. Uh, Julia Roberts was more of a, a fun dance therapy. Sandra Bullock has skills, so if you ever talk with her, have her show you some stuff. Uh, and Jessica Alba helped get her ready for Honey. And uh, the celebrity list is amazing, but what really touched me more than anything was I was teaching kids in Israel when bombs were falling. Wow. And I remember teaching hip hop and bombs were still falling. And I was like, hey, what's, what's going on? And they're like, just keep going, Milo. You'll get used to it. Wow. Kids in Egypt, in the streets. Uh, it's just been an incredible journey. I've been blessed to bring um, hip hop around the world. And it wasn't easy. It was a very difficult thing, but I accepted the calling. And it's just been an amazing career. And they call you almost the king, not almost, <laughs> the king of hip hop really is your name, your go-to. And that is so incredible because you've really brought in the roots of hip hop and shown people what hip hop truly is. And I even have been so connected to hip hop my whole life, but I don't think enough people know the roots of hip hop and kind of tell us a little bit more about the roots for you and how it inspired you and how you're able to connect through people through the roots of hip hop. Yeah, it, it's, uh, you know, I like to let people know that I am not a creator of hip hop. Uh, and I bow down to the legends of the true hip hop uh, creators who started the music in New York in a basement. Uh, DJ Cool started the whole hip hop thing off. And then we had many legends who created the different styles. Uh, what I did, which was a, a, a pioneer uh, phase for me, 
was creating a hip hop dance fitness workout. Ooh. So I was able to create, and it was hours and hours of choreography, putting the elements together. How can I keep a class going? What steps are they going to be able to get? Um, and then someone gave me an opportunity after two years of trying. I was working at a hotel from midnight to eight in the morning, yeah. security guard, and then searching for a place who would just give me a chance. And this one uh, studio gave me a chance, and it happened to be one of the most famous studios. It was called Voight Fitness and Dance at the time, and it was the place to go. People from all over the world, all the celebrities, and they gave me a chance. And I remember for two weeks I had no students, so I would go in wow. the studio, I would practice and I would believe. I would speak, believe, visualize a full class for two weeks. And, you know, uh, I could tell the people at the front desk were kind of getting uh, discouraged until one day I walked in and they were all like, and I was like, how y'all doing? <laughs> How's everything? And they're like, you have a student. And I was like, yes. <laughs> and it was my first student. And I was so excited. And they said, and it's Julia Roberts. And I said, Who's that? <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> Come on, I mean, I love it. I'm yes. from the street and yes. hip hop. I'm not watching what's happening. Right, right. I, I was really just happy to have a student, mm -hmm. honestly. And I walked in, and here's this this organically beautiful soul, and we danced for an hour. And I remember she ran and jumped in my arms and said, "Whatever this is, I love it. I can't wait to do it again." And wow. We became friends and. Uh, Julia and I would turn around and the class would keep getting fuller and fuller. Next thing you know, sold out class. Wow. Uh, who's who of Hollywood in the class. And Julia and I would sit and have our coffee after class. And that's how this whole hip hop dance fitness thing started for me. Wow. And it's like that visualization technique, that, that belief. Do you find that that is truly what kind of brought that essence and those people and that vibe for you and kind of what created that? I believe without a doubt, Shay. I believe without a doubt because what actually started me dancing was, um, my parents used to go at it. I mean, they domestic violence, boxing, screaming, guitar hitting, blood. Wow. And I was a young, fragile type. I was mm -hmm. the youngest of seven. Yeah. I couldn't take it. Yeah. I, I mean, I'd hear glass breaking. My mother's Latin, so she was really, a, a, you know, had a fired, uh, fired up temper. Mm -hmm. And I'm just this little scary seven-year-old. Just take sponges. You can feel it. Feel everything. Yeah. So... I got the idea one day to go in the room, turn on some music, and just dance. And my whole wall would turn into thousands of people calling my name, Milo, Milo. And, yes. and I would just dance, and I'd visualize this. And the more and more I did it, the, the, the further and further away the screams and the yelling got. Right. Not that the music was loud, because I, I couldn't play it really too loud, but... I actually visualized it and created this place, mm -hmm. my go-to place when there was drama or domestic violence. And yeah. that's how I really, really started digging into dance. It became therapeutic for me. Now, when I started to do my own thing in Hollywood, I would visualize that same place mm -hmm. I did when I was a child. And I created this place. Now, mind you, when I was in Russia, I was in Moscow, I was on stage, there's 5,000 students dancing with me. I saw some of the same people Wow! I did when I was young, yelling my name. And that goes back to the power of the mind and how truthfully, if we believe it and see it in our mind and our vision, it's, it's already happened. It, it can come true. It will come true, but you have to keep the faith. You have to keep the belief. And no matter what your religion is, as long as you believe in a higher power, you have that, you know, that drive and that, that that love and that passion there, it, it comes for you. It finds you. But I think, you know, you were lucky to find that outlet and have that, that kind of fuel to dance and music where I get, I think not everybody has that opportunity and that outlet. And how has your mindset really played a big part in, you know, from business to your relationships to everything in your life so far? Um, it, it's been amazing because mind you, um, being, and I don't want to, I don't want to keep playing the race card, but this is actually what happened. hundred percent. Uh, growing up, I didn't have, um, 
I couldn't really go to dance studios. That's unbelievable to me and not okay. And, and hip hop was not accepted as a form of dance or professional. But yet today in mainstream society, it's all we listen to and all we vibe with. It is. Wow. And it's a billion dollar industry. Wow. And, and they tried to keep it down as long as they could, but cream always rises to the top. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I say that because I couldn't visualize hip hop as a professional path for me because right. it didn't exist when I was younger. Right. Like we weren't running around like, I'm going to be a hip hop choreographer when I grow up. Right. It didn't exist. Because you were shunned. It, yeah, Literally. it didn't shun. However, I visualized dance and performing this, whatever I'm doing, as my Trojan horse into freedom, where people will not judge me uh, as, you know, as my color. They'll see my spirit or they'll see the gift of dance and they're like, oh, this is great. What is this? Absolutely. And we, we started having people of all nationalities in one room, dancing to the same beat. Oh, it's so beautiful. And I think that's why dance and music is so special to me too, because you really can bring together the unity of souls. It doesn't matter what color you are, what religion you are, whatever you are, you can connect and vibe through that passion, through that song, through that just euphoria, essentially. Um, cause similar situation with me when I grew up, it was a kind of toxic household and I mm. really fueled my passion through dance and singing and, and just performance. And I visualize same thing. That's why hearing your story is so, it's so exciting for me to know that I wasn't the only one that I think that we as creators and, and artists are, are not the only ones and we're not in it alone. And there are so many people that are, are feeling alone and essentially going back to mental health again, that we're not alone that, and we all need to kind of create a space and a vision for each other and hold space for everybody and stop with the judgment essentially. Um, and I guess too, I want to bring it back also, how has fitness and just, and that really helped you and your lifestyle and made you just feel better about everything everything. It, it has. And, and I, I want to go back to the point you just made, which um, I have to say this. I, when I sat down and you and I were just, just talking, just yeah. reconnecting, it was an amazing, amazing life-changing experience for me. And I left empowered from some of the things you shared with me, some of the things you taught me, but like like you said, I went home feeling that there's there's someone like me out there. Right. That connection. That not only gets me, understands me, and listens to me. Yeah. But um, is so much like me that we're 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 part of a tribe. That hey, I found another one, and hey, wait till you meet so and so. Yeah. So I just wanted to expand on that, and I agree with you, and and. Uh, I, I haven't been able to express myself for the last six years mm -hmm. uh, because it's been all building businesses mm -hmm. and I've been really busy and sitting down with you was really one of the first times that I got to, oh, oh that makes me so happy. And it was just amazing because uh, not everybody are good listeners. Good. See, you're you're a good listener and teacher Thanks. and sharer of the gift. So I got all that in our sitting, and uh, I just wanted to reiterate what you were saying uh, a few seconds ago about the uh, collaboration of people that you know understand and think alike in the spirit realm. Yeah, absolutely. And even when we met, it's amazing too, because I do life coaching and spiritual work and I do use angel Oracle cards and just giving messages, but we really tapped into, um, almost a kind of tribe essence of a lion of that vibe of just really going for it and stepping into your power. And today you wore the lion shirt and it makes me so excited <laughs> and happy because it's so true. It's an essence and you have to believe and you have to make sure when you do get stuck to just have the faith and find the people that really believe in you and empower you and creating that environment and that essence and those relationships for yourself so that you can thrive, so that you can level up. And you have a 
program. You have everything also on the Level Up vibe. Tell us a little bit more about Level Up and everything for you. You've done motivational speaking. You have a book you're writing. Tell me a little bit more about that. Uh, it's exciting. Um, I I had been following a motivational speaker um, who I'm sure you know and many of your, your listeners and watchers know, uh, Les Brown. Yes. He and uh, I would say Tony Robbins and Les Brown are neck and neck with number one in the world for, for me and others. Um, well, through a mutual uh, friend, I was able to talk to Les Brown for 20 minutes. It was 20 minute life changing wow. thing. I never imagined. Well, let me take that back. <laughs> I spoke it into existence, created that thought process. Next thing you know, I'm on the phone with Les. Wow. And now I realize that I created that um, Absolutely. through, through, the, through the thought process. And I'm talking to Les and, uh, you know, honoring him and, and, and lifting him up as well. Um, and then I shared uh, my book idea and he said, I love it. Matter of fact, what you're going to call it is how to dance through life. Ooh, that's good. The greatest steps in creating your better self. Wow. And I said, I love it. Can I use it? And he said, son, sure, you can use it. Aww. And when you're finished, send me a copy. If I like it, I'll hold it and I'll promote it. And I'm like, my mentor, my, you know, the person I idolize for motivational speaking wants to hold my book. Wow. And so um, that was very inspiring for me. And um uh, I, I watched a YouTube video on how to write a book in a weekend. I love that. <laughs> and it's so true. If you believe it, it will happen. Yes. And what you perceive, you experience. So it's so cool that that literally manifested for you. It did. And I, I'm a true <clears throat> believer that we do create our own realities. I have it tattooed right here. These are the symbols on my hands. Ch uh, accepting change and moving forward Amen. because we cannot stay stuck. Right. And creating our own realities. Amen. And with our mindset, our thought process, but but also our frequency. It's so important that we're taking care of our self-care and yes. our frequency. Do you find that um, you got, when you said you were stuck and you were kind of at this point of feeling stuck, were there a series of events that kind of happened where you just were like, oh my gosh, how do I get out of this? Or what was keeping kind of your vibration down? Was it the mindset? What was it for you? Well, um, I just got back from Brazil mm -hmm. and we brought... Millennium Dance Complex, which is the world's most famous dance studio. Um, I spoke to the partners there, Anne Marie. She's amazing. She's like family, and she is a light. Uh, she's one of our tribe members. Yes. She's amazing. And uh, I said, I want to bring uh, Millennium to Brazil. And she's like, okay, let's, let's sit down. We'll talk, and let's make it happen. <sighs> so we did it. We brought Millennium to Brazil. It wasn't easy. Uh, I actually slept in the building for like eight months, wake up, tear down, build. Uh, it was, it, you know, it was, it was labor. It was, yeah. it wasn't easy. I was a frustrated American in Brazil. Right. <laughs> because we're spoiled. Yeah. We need air conditioner. Yeah. Ralph's air conditioning come put our, you know, we need air. Yeah. Flooring. Hey, we call Larry's flooring or she, Sheila comes over, puts the floor in. In Brazil, you do everything. Yeah, we don't realize how great we have it here. Oh, it's, it's great unreal. here. But I realized also uh, my creator wanted me to build a dance studio from the ground up. That's and I was in, in the dance room building the floor. And one day I stood up and I said, I get it. I get it. I know why I'm nailing this floor because I've been blessed with the gift of dance, I've done everything I've ever wanted to. Yeah. And now I'm investing in the future, the children and the kids. So um, we built Millennium Dance Complex. Then across the street, uh, we created M Level Up, which means uh, Milo or another level up. Oh, I love that. Or a level up from Millennium. But it's my initials, but we like to think that it's Millennium, a level up from Millennium. And in my facility, it's a... Uh, Film production. We have the top celebrities in Brazil now going there, having auditions wow. and rehearsals. So that was created. So for five, six years, I'm focusing on these businesses in Brazil, just focusing nonstop. I became on autopilot, just working and everything's a Portuguese. So I'm able to translate all this stuff. When I get back here, um, 
I get back to my home in California and I'm like, <laughs> who am I? Right. We got lost a little bit in the business side of things and in the giving and the, all of it. Wow. Who am I? What do I do? It's almost like I had to really retrain myself on my journey because the Brazil projects were actually for uh, other people, mm -hmm. which I also believe as well, you're getting give. Absolutely. It's, give a give, you... it's an equal give and take. And that's where that self-love comes back. And I really have had to learn that because if you're giving constantly, but you're not taking care of the self, yes. you can't give from an empty cup. So it's so important for that self-care, that self-worth, that self-love to be a constant thing coming into your life so that you can operate from an even higher level and give even more. Yes. Absolutely. I and agree. What do you think um, would you want to say to kids watching or any of, of the kids out there that have a dream that really want inspiration or advice or anything like that? Um, well, for the kids, um, if I could go back and do it all over again, I wouldn't change a thing because every lesson I learned was for the better me. Yeah. And fell big because every time I failed was creating a stronger me. So kids, when you, when you fail, uh, fail big, because every time you fail, it's creating a win for you, a big win, mm, yes. a big win. Uh, and never give up because you could be uh, two feet from the finish line and not know it. Yep. And uh, respect people on your way. Uh, don't hurt anyone trying to get to your goals. Uh, and your blessing could be in someone else's pile of poop, is oh. what I say. <laughs> That is so good. And I like to also say too, when you hear a no, it's look at it as not right now. Ooh. Instead of the no, not right I now. Agree. You know, it I keeps agree. the vibe high and it keeps you inspired and it keeps you believing. And what would your message be for adults and parents um, raising kids and dealing with uh, today's day and age of all the craziness happening in our world and and just trying to parent? I can't imagine. Have, I don't have kids yet, but um, I can't imagine. So what would you say to parents? Um, parents, um, they need to have, in my opinion, your cup needs to be full in order to share with others. Matter of fact, when you have a, your cup and then the overflow is for the others. But it's hard to give when your cup is empty and you're trying to take care of the kids and you're trying to do the husband thing or your partner thing. It's hard to give when you're empty. So take care of yourself, adults, parents. Find your quiet time, recharge, reset, take care of you so that you can continue taking care of those around you. Mm -hmm. And if there is no one around you, then take care of you. And then the next person you run into, you'll be able to feed as well. Oh, I love that. It's so true. It's so true. That's yeah. amazing. And uh, I guess one thing, one big takeaway from your first session with me that we had, what would you say was your biggest kind of aha moment when we worked together the first time? Well, just being in your presence was like, oh gosh, Aww. this is amazing. <laughs> it's amazing so because uh, I really... Let, let me tell you this, and I, I, it's hard for me to say this because I'm a very humble person. I've worked with the greatest in the world, one of our greatest performers in the world, one of our greatest actors in the world, uh, kings and queens, Pope John Paul II. Um, so in my life, I've been called to a type of greatness. Mm -hmm. And again, it's very hard for me to say this. Uh, I'm very humble, but God has allowed me to have roots and wings. So I say all that to say I've touched millions and millions of people around the world, over 30 countries, and um, I'm able to talk to generals and colonels and kings and queens and inspire them. But when I met you and we sat down and talked, I was empty. And I always ask God, I said, God, how do I get fed? Who's going to push me? Who's going to inspire me? Where do I get my plug in? Mm -hmm. And I, I kept asking him that because I was empty. Because I was like, you want me to do all these big things and do all these big things in your name. And, but I'm 
I'm hungry, I'm thirsty, I'm tired, I'm exhausted. And that's when somehow you and I started communicating just with the intention of, hey, what's up? What are you doing? You know, how's everything? Good. Yeah. And then when I met you in your space, it gave me, I didn't expect to get everything I needed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I thought, okay, I'm going to get inspired. It's great to interact because we're interacting now after COVID and sharing the same space. I felt like I got everything I needed. Wow. From the lion, which I'm, I'm sure we could share about later, to uh, stepping back into the king that I am, my purpose, my why, and my personality and my purpose uh, relate to each other. Mm -hmm. But you brought that out in me. Wow. And I wanted to publicly hear, and I told you in private, thank you for bringing me back to life and being an instrument of awakening the lion because ever since I left you that day, I've been walking uh, wow. in this place of uh, lion type of attitude. Oh, thank you. I'm so grateful and so happy that you were able to feel it and, and know your inner power because that's all you. I'm just here to mirror it back to you. So, so grateful and uh, wow, lots of leveling up, lots of crazy breakthroughs. <laughs> amazing. It's been amazing. It's been amazing. And I'm so happy to have you here. And thank you so much for coming on It's a Vibe and uh, being with me here today. And uh, we will definitely have you back. I can't wait to keep this energy going. It's incredible. Keep the leveling up. Yes. And thank you guys so much for watching. It's a vibe. We are settling up today with some amazing takeaways for you. I cannot wait to be back with you guys next week. Thank you so much to Silo TV. Until next time, keep vibing. We will see you guys next week.